1931 is actually a very important date in the history of recording technology and Maltese music. 1931 was the year where EMI or HMV became EMI, Electrical Manufacturing Industries. It was also the year in which uh, the first Maltese, the first records of Maltese music were produced. It is also the starting point of the Malta's Lost Voices project, which uh, in the past decade has become known for the uh, digitization and preservation of Maltese songs on the earliest records of Maltese music, now known as the Malta's Lost Voices project. My interest in music and uh, records um, led me to carry out personal research into the story of Maltese music. Looking for the earliest recordings led me to a very particular collection of uh, songs which were published in the early years of the interwar period. I'm talking about 1931 and 32, when in those days uh, you had the Valletta agents, the music shops, which would contract musicians um, of a variety of uh, styles. Um, and generally rehearse them and package them and prepare them for recording sessions overseas. It's very interesting to uh, think about this uh, recording technology and the recording phenomenon, not only in Malta but also internationally. You see, by the uh, early 20th century, most of the record companies were already sending recording engineers to pretty much every corner of the globe to uh, contract musicians and document their music. This was not necessarily out of artistic scope, but more out of an economic, the impetus was actually driven by an economic desire to make records to sell gramophones worldwide. Therefore, you have the interaction of technology, of people with technology in recording technology as from the 20, early 20th century, where desire was to sell software, to sell the hardware. Um, interestingly enough, Malta was also uh, ripe in those days. The, the, the phenomenon of recording Maltese music happened in the early 30s, which was quite late. However, by that time you had new um, technology which made this possible and made both a, uh, the, the, the gramophones themselves uh, more economically viable and available to a larger section of the population as well as the records um, having developed um, technologically to, to produce a uh, high fidelity sound which was um, pleasurable at least coming through the gramophone horn. It was uh, very interesting for me to discover the, uh, this phenomenon of Maltese music, particularly through references in the journals of the day. Um, so uh, by going through the microphones at the Biblioteca in Valletta I discovered uh, many references to the publication of these records, uh, adverts which would uh, give the listings of records which were published uh, month after month, as well as references to musicians and uh, composers and music agents who were responsible for, the, um, for this uh, musical phenomenon which became a social phenomenon. It was, you have to understand that in those days the Maltese had listened to uh, music from Italy, they were exposed to records of Italian music, of American music and English music, but this was the first time that the Maltese heard their own voice and their own, their own uh, language coming out of the gramophone horn. So it was a very interesting self-reflexive uh, exercise. Plus, um, it was not necessarily appreciated by all strata of society, as the midday views indicates that uh, the quality um, or the content of some of these records was actually spurned. <laughs> It also led me to discover uh, communities in Valletta, um, the types of, the, the, the likes of um, Fortunato Habib, who was a person I discovered, a merchant from Valletta. I discovered his shop through the Guida Generale, which makes reference to his shop uh, Lisette in, uh, in Merchant Street, originally called Lafayette. He was a uh, merchant of uh, Italian origin, of Jewish descent, who sent the first group of musicians to Tunis in 1930 to record the first 15 records on Polyphon Records. Interestingly, 
Um, due to the lack of um, commercial studios here in Malta, uh, musicians would be sent overseas to record with electrical recording methods on labels like Polyphon, Audion, um, Zonophon and his master's voice. In Tunisia, Polyphon and Audion were prevalent and uh, the first 15 records of Maltese music were published in Valletta 19 in February to April of 1931. The first 15 records um, interestingly portray uh, the music the, 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 and styles which were prevalent in the day, uh, the kind of music that people would listen to, which was um, lyrical music, operatic music, um, but also comic storytelling and traditional Anna. The five musicians who took off on that ship in uh, November 1930 were actually no other than, uh, none other than Giuseppe Schwerp, known as a Shudi, who was known for his Anna, Manuel Mercia Simensa, Wati Kakia, who was a well known um, baritone, and the tenor Antonio Toma Castelletti. These were accompanied by the musician Giuseppe Prato, who was a well-known and accomplished musician who played double bass, piano and guitar, as well as sang. The five people came back with 15 records on Polyphon label in 1931. The newspapers of the day publicized the arrival of these records as being quite a social phenomenon. While some criticized the content and the quality of the records, it was also lauded by others who thought that this was definitely a commendable exercise and it should uh, be repeated. Interestingly, later that year, we also find that other agents from the music shops in Valletta started and caught on to the exercise of recording Maltese music. It's very interesting that for the first time also you have to understand that Maltese music like music elsewhere had to be edited to three minutes. The technology of the day produced 10 inch records which is about 30-32 centimeters which means that for a disc spinning at 78 revolutions per minute, it would produce approximately three minutes of playing time. This interestingly became the standard of the uh, pop song in later years and in later decades. Another interesting aspect about the uh, 10 minute discs, the gramophone discs, yo disket al faham, as, we are, as they are referred to in Maltese, is the fact that the recordings on these records and practically all the music of the world was edited to three minutes to fit on these records. Classical uh, records or classical music was sometimes re recorded on 12 inch records which gave them four minutes, 20 seconds. However, Maltese Anna and Maltese lyrical songs were from this point onwards uh, composed and arranged to fit on three minute records. Another very interesting aspect is of this technology is that there was no um, post-production which means all the recordings on records worldwide until the 1950s were live studio productions. They're very interesting because it's almost like these records are uh, sonic sculptures which encapsulate you know, like, uh, like a snapshot, an oral snapshot of the studio with the musicians in that particular time and place in history, documenting Maltese musicians in Malta, Tunis and elsewhere. By June of 1931, Nino D'Amato, who was known for his reputable store of D'Amato, which is known today as D'Amato Record Store, was already a reputable um, agent for his master's voice gramophones. He had already gone into a deal in the early 20th century with uh, his master's voice. And now, in correspondence with the mother company, realized that it, there was, it was a lucrative um, activity to, to embark on the recording 
of Maltese music. So he proceeded to engage um, composers, musicians and lyricists who would then produce between 1931 and 32 a set of 50 gramophone records under his master's voice record label, um, also under the Zonophone sets of records. He proceeded to contract the well-known satirist um, and, uh, and writer Carlos Atariano, who was known for his contribution um, in the popular journals of the day, Il Hamar al -Ber -A, um, and Dr. Brombos, amongst others. These were very important reference in my research in terms of discovering not only um, the, the, the activity of recording and who took part, but also um, many of his lyrics uh, were later published in the journals of the day and which became direct reference for my research. Amongst other people, I think one of the better known characters was the personality Emmanuel Echilia, who was a well-known folk singer from uh, Hazebuch. Through my research in the correspondence uh, between Antony D'Amato, Nino D'Amato, and the mother company in, in uh, Middlesex, uh, UK, I discovered that the uh, mother company agreed that it would be potentially lucrative to uh, embark on the exercise of recording uh, Maltese music, also because of the consideration of the Maltese diaspora, which existed elsewhere in Australia, um, Canada and the States. Even though Nino D'Amato would not have the, the rights as distributor in those countries, he could organize the packaging for the Maltese diaspora. So he saw the potential lucrative business of making and selling records. Um, one condition by the mother company was that all the material on record would have to be of original nature as uh, the market being so small it was not worth spending the money on copyrights and uh, royalties. Therefore all the material recorded on these Maltese records was produced specifically for the set of records or at least would have to be of a public domain um, so as not to pay um, any royalties. Emmanuel Echilia, the well-known Anne um, from Hazebuch, was contracted, in fact, for the singing of the uh, Anna ballads, um, many of the lyrics penned by Carlos Satariano. Emmanuel Echilia became known for many of the songs that he would record in those two years and uh, would eventually come back with 29 songs under his belt, many of which would make him very famous and many of which he would be remembered for. Um, even in his lifetime, as he, it, was, it is um, uh, said that as he walked through the village, people would play uh, many songs like Shahnaz Bihminya Fiarana um, or Arturo Maria, uh, which were attributed to Chilia. We also know that uh, the musicians received a 5% rate, royalty rate, on the sale of records. They were not paid directly, but they were paid on the sale once the records were sold. Um, we know for a fact that uh, Carmelo Bozutil, um, Emmanuel Cilia, Carlos Satarian, and all those people who were engaged for the production of the Maltese records would receive royalties until, for the rest of their life, actually, even until uh, the 60s. I kept con pum pum, pum back and up the fly, metal value ni more, fit tom na whistur to. Interestingly, later that year, um, or earlier that year, Louis Carabot from the uh, music shop, Music Emporium in Merchant Street, also made arrangements to send uh, musicians to Tunis to record under the Audion uh, record label. However, earlier that year, he was in agreement with the Deutsche Grammophon record company to bring the recording equipment and engineers to Malta. 
It is reported that Carlo Diacono, the uh, well-known composer from Zeytun, in fact was um, contracted for the organization of the recording hall, finding a hall and soundproofing it here on Merchant Street in 1931. It is interesting to note that with the recording sessions happening in Malta, it was now possible to record more than six musicians on the overseas trips it was not possible to send many musicians um, and, <clears throat> and, and, and singers um, on a recording trip, and therefore the visiting party was always very limited. In this case, you had orchestras, you had uh, choirs, singers of every genre, which were included in this hall and could produce their music. Another 48 records were produced under Audion Records, this time with a larger variety of songs. It was important to produce a catalogue which um, had a variety of musical styles, one which, which would appeal to the tastes of many people. So at the end of the day you have a, uh, a section with lyrical music, waltzes and tangos and foxtrots and the musical which was danced to in the days in the music halls around Valletta. You also have uh, an amount of storytelling known as macchietti usually or, or parlanti usually accompanied by music and the third section would be the uh, Anna or folk singing, the folk chant which included uh, lots of poetry and, and, and accompanied by guitars. It is interesting to note that 1932 another group of musicians was sent by D'Amato to the Milan studios, um, HMV studios in Milan as the Maltese, Sicilians and Sardinians would be sent to record in Milan um, going into Italy via Sicily and then catching a train up to Milan where they would spend the week and record their music. Also, the records in Tunisia would be sold and distributed to the Maltese community, it was noted, as the uh, Jewish merchants in Tunisia would sell the records for the enjoyment of the Maltese people. It is also reported that many of the folk singers did actually visit Tunisia on a number of occasions, including Giuseppe Shuir Pesciudi, for the entertainment of the Maltese. 1932 was actually the last of these recording sessions where Louis Carabot would send the last visiting party to record on the Pate, French Pate records. Madalena, Madalena, which the tocra, which Elena, in a jeta postali, pite shoro chandawi. The reasons for the activity not being carried out after, through the war or after the war is. Uh, uh, as yet undiscovered. Research shows that in actual fact the records and the gramophones were not that cheap for society at the time, um, even though the popularity of the music definitely withstood the test of time as these records later on in the, in the 60s would be get, uh, well at least a selection of these records was uh, reproduced on 45 RPM vinyl records. This would at least guarantee the, uh, the memory of these songs and this music and the musicians for definitely another generation. Many of these songs were played on the Red Fusion in later years and today we have access to these, to these songs and these records. Um, in fact, through the um, Malta's Lost Voices project, we have now digitized the entire collection. Um, we have installed a um, database in the National Archives where the public can now reference the music and these songs, uh, both for research purposes but also for entertainment. The, uh, the content is now being uh, made public through the publication of this music through books, CDs, um, LPs and other products under the uh, record label Filfla Records uh, because we believe that it is very important that this material is made accessible in interesting but also in quality ways um, so as to guarantee the, the, the posterity and the memory of this music. I think that one of the ways of guaranteeing the memory of this music and the, the, the songs and the stories of these people is by actually performing 
and therefore we have only recently uh, published a series of songbooks for education. And uh, hopefully this memory, the memory of these songs and these records will not be forgotten and could be passed on in, through performance or even through publication, but also through the uh, ongoing availability of the material uh, which is available for research here in the library and elsewhere. <laughs> Cantina. 